Good morning and welcome to worship this morning. I'm Pastor Laura. Pastor Michelle and I would like to welcome you to worship with Renton United Methodist Church this morning. We're so glad that you can join us for worship. This morning we are welcoming all generations into worship together. We'll have a little bit different, more casual worship experience today and it will hopefully be invitational to people of all ages. So if you're worshiping with children and you're not used to it, your worship might look a little different. It might be noisier than usual, but I encourage you to find ways that your whole family can worship together. If you need to, pause the video every once in a while and let the children ask questions and engage fully in all the parts of worship. And if you're worshiping with elders that you don't usually worship with, again, it might look different than it usually does. But however you worship, whatever people you're with as you worship, I encourage you to use the comments features in YouTube and Facebook so that you can connect with us. And also to sign the attendance register so that we know that you are worshiping with us. You'll find that on our website as well as a link to it on our Facebook site. We welcome the opportunity to worship together as the whole people of God this morning. Throughout our service today, we're going to be making stars. We're going to be talking about stars in a lot of different contexts. So I want to invite you to begin today, this morning, with making an easy star. Maybe you have some paper nearby you. Maybe it's some wrapping paper that you're done with or just a paper you've already used one side of. And maybe a pencil or pen or marker or crayon. And just draw a star, any kind of star. Maybe you want to see how many different kinds of stars you can draw. That's great. If you have an old Christmas card and you want to draw a star on the back of that, that's wonderful. There's lots of different kinds of stars that we might draw, and I encourage you to start engaging with the idea of stars even now. So as we get into worship as well, I would invite you to light a Christmas candle as part of our beginning of worship to remind us that God's light is shining brightly not only through the stars, but also here in our worship together this morning. As we begin, I invite you to join me as we sing our hymn of praise, Star Child.
Good morning, and welcome to Renton United Methodist Church this 27th of December. My name is Nancy Cook, and I'm your liturgist this morning. Please join me in the opening prayer. Heavenly Guide, we pray this morning that these moments of worship would draw us closer to you so that we may follow your leading. Bless us and all who worship you this day. We pray in the name of the Christ child, come among us one more time. Amen. As we come together this morning, may we begin to recognize the Christ within each one who gathers with us, virtually or within our households. Let us greet each other and share signs of the peace that Christ brings into our lives this season. The peace of Christ be with you. Hi. May the peace of Christ be with you. Good morning. Peace of Christ be with you. Peace of Christ be with you. The peace of Christ be with you. May the peace of Christ be with you. Hello. Peace with you. And also with you. Our scripture reading this morning is Luke chapter 2, verses 27 through 38. Guided by the Spirit, Simeon came into the temple, and when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him what was customary under the law, Simeon took him in his arms and praised God, saying, Master, now you are dismissing your servant in peace according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the presence of all peoples, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and for glory to your people Israel. And the child's father and mother were amazed as what was being said about him. When Simeon blessed them and said to his mother Mary, this child is destined for the falling and the rising of many in Israel, and to be a sign that will be opposed, so the, that the inner thoughts of many will be revealed, and a sword will pierce, pierce your own soul too. There was also a prophet, Anna, the daughter of Phanuel, of the tribe of Asher. She was of a great age, having lived with her husband seven years after her marriage. Then as a widow to the age of 84, she never left the temple, but worshipped there with fasting and prayer night and day. At the moment she came and began to praise God and to speak about the child to all who were looking for the redemption of Jerusalem. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Good morning, children. I'm so glad that you could join us this morning and be part of our whole worship service. Our service this morning, if you haven't heard yet, it's about stars. And I've been thinking about stars this week because I've been thinking about the way that sometimes you hear people called rock star. Have you ever heard that? 
Sometimes it actually means that someone's a rock star. They're in a rock band and they play the guitar and they're out on the stage. But sometimes it means something else, right? Sometimes you hear that idea like, hey mom, you're a rock star, right? Or sometimes we might call our doctor or our nurse, hey, you're a rock star doctor. Or maybe even sometimes you've heard someone else say that to you, hey, you're a rock star. Sometimes I think when we use that, I think we mean that the person that we're talking to or that we're talking about is really good at what they do. And if they're not really good at it already, they're really working hard towards getting good at it. And that they're really dedicated to making a difference. And I think that that idea of being a rock star is kind of one of the things that we might associate with what Anna and Simeon recognize in the baby Jesus. In our Bible story for this morning, Anna and Simeon were in the temple when Mary and Joseph brought the baby in to be presented and to be blessed. When they brought him in, Simeon and Anna both recognized in him greatness. They recognized that spark that was God that allowed that baby Jesus to grow up to be a leader and to be someone who could change the world, who could make a difference in people's lives for the better. And I think what they were saying, maybe they didn't say it in so many words, but wow, this is a rock star baby. So as I'm thinking about stars this morning, I wondered if you might want to make one with me today. You might have already made one earlier in the service, but I want to show you another way to make a star. So I've got a bunch of them already made here. These are made out of old, already used wrapping paper. So if you have any of that laying around, I encourage you to use it. Or if you have any other kind of paper around that you want to use, that's fine. We're going to need to start off with a square. Um, and so if you have wrapping paper and it has squares on the back, that makes it even easier because you can count the squares and make sure that it's actually starting out as a square. So if you have a square, you're going to want to fold that square in half. It doesn't really matter what direction you fold it because it's a square. So it'll be the same no matter what you do. And then once you fold it in half, you're going to take one of the creased corners and you're going to fold it over diagonally to the center of the other side so that you're making a diagonal crease along one corner so that you end up with a square on one side and a triangle on the other of your uh, piece of paper. You're going to unfold that and then you're going to take the uncreased corner on that same end and fold it over. And what you're doing is you're making an X-shaped crease in the center of one end of your paper. So once you have that X shape, you're going to take the creased end that's on the opposite side from the X and you're going to fold it up to the center of the X. So it will end up making kind of a funny shape like that. And then once you've got that point right to the middle of the X, you're going to then fold it back along the creased bottom side and make a point here. So now your paper has the creased uh, square on one side and it has a kite shape on the other. Once you have that done, you're going to take that creased square side and fold it up to the point as well so that you're making another triangle. So now you have two triangles, they look kind of different from each other. One is kite shaped, the other is more triangular. And you've got a point in between them. So you're gonna fold along that pointy edge to make one stack of triangles with some loose edges on top. So what we wanna do then is take our scissors, find some scissors that are the right size for your hand, and cut along that top edge of your triangle, cut off all those loose edges. So now we have a stack of triangles, right? But if we unfold that stack of triangles, what are we gonna find? What shape will it be inside, do you know? It'll have five sides. Look at that, it's a pentagon. So I'm going to then at this point, in order to make my life a little easier later, I'm gonna make sure that all the points of my pentagon have a mountain fold on them. So I'm folding the pointy edges of the pentagon uh, so that the side I want to be the outside of my star is on the outside. So each point of the pentagon has a mountain fold, if you know what a mountain fold is. So we're making uh, the side that I want to have the outside of my star 
have a mountain fold. So I'll be using those creases a couple of times later on. So it's nice to make sure that they're easy to find now. So each point has a, a line that goes straight into the center of the pentagon. That's going to be where we fold up the star in a little bit. All right, so now we've got a big pentagon, and you'll see with these stars that I already have made, they also have smaller pentagons in them, right? You can kind of see that white shape in the center, so we need to work on that next. So to make that, we want to start with the flat side of the pentagon towards us. We're going to fold it up past the center of the pentagon up to where the corners of the flat side touch the corners of two of those pointy lines that we made into the middle, two of those mountain folds. So I'm just folding that flat edge up to the diagonals that I had before. And I'm going to do that on all sides. So flat edge up to the diagonals that went from point to center, and then unfold and do it on the next side. So I'm on my third side, flat edge up to the diagonals and unfold. There's my fourth side, flat edge up to the diagonals into the center, and fold it, crease it, and then unfold it. Fifth side, flat edge up. So just check and make sure that you have all five. So now when I look at my big pentagon, I can also see in the middle a smaller pentagon. That's gonna be key. That's gonna form the base of what we have so that we can fold it up. So I'm almost ready to fold the whole thing up. I just have to make one more crease, one more pleat in order to make it fold up neatly into this kind of shape. So in order to do that, I'm gonna use two of those uh, folds at a time that I've made. So first I start with a flat edge near me and I fold up on that crease again. This time I'm gonna put my finger under one edge. I like to do it from the right hand side, but if you're left handed, you might wanna do it from the left hand side. As I put my finger up underneath that, I'm going to then use the second uh, flat side fold that I made and fold that far so that then I can crease the underneath part. That's going to make the pleat that I need. So I'm using two of those flat side folds that I, used, that I made before at a time. Then I unfold that and I uh, move to the next side. Fold up the flat side, put my finger underneath, and I fold as far as I need to to get to the second flat side fold on the next side. And I crease underneath. Unfold, move to the next side. Fold up the flat side, put my finger underneath, pull over the crease, uh, pull over the point as far as I need to in order to get that flat side fold again, and then crease the underneath part. Fold over, put my finger underneath, pull over the point just as far as the next flat side fold that I made before. I'm following along with the folds that I've made before. So there's only one new crease that I'm making on each side, and that's the underneath crease. Once I get the point lined up so that both of the uh, flat side folds are still, are, I'm using the ones that I made before. I'm not making new ones there, okay? So I'm just going to make sure, I think it might be on my last side. I'm going to make sure that I've got all of them done, and I can feel underneath that I've already creased that underneath part. Okay, so I think I'm ready to do the folding bit. All right, so I've got all my creases in place. And what I want to do is I want to find those mountain folds again. Remember, on the points, we made mountain folds so that they would all fold the same way. So as I've got those mountain folds, I'm going to look for that smaller pentagon and try to keep it flat on the table and push those mountain folds in kind of as much as I can together so that they all fold in at the same time. And if I can get them to lay flat, all I have to do is pat the center. And there I have a star shape, right? And so if we can do that, we have a nice flat star on one side. If we turn it to the other side, we can make the creases of our star a little more crisp like these are. So that's what we're gonna do next. I'm going to take the, if you turn to the other side, you'll see the smaller pentagon there. That's the one that we folded on. I'm gonna take the edge, the point of one of those pentagon pieces, and we're going to move them to the center of that pentagon. And then we're gonna crease the point of our star, make it a little more crisp. We're gonna to turn to the next side, take the point of the pentagon, fold it into the center, and then crease to make the pointy part of our star. 
take the edge of the pentagon, the point of the pentagon, move it to the center, and then crease to make the pointy part of your star. And you gotta do that on all five sides to make your star. And so as you move around, eventually you'll get to the last point of the pentagon. And it's a little tricky because that first one is in the way. So you have to lift it up just a little bit, and then you have to encourage the sides to lay flat a little bit. And so you kinda have to put your finger underneath you might have an advantage because you might have smaller fingers than mine. That'll help get underneath there and help everything lay flat. Once you get the center of the pentagon, um, the edge of the pentagon folded into the center, then you can crease that fifth side. You can make your star edges nice and crisp and get them to lay flat. So there's your star. So I hope that you're able to do that. If you need to, pause the video and go back and look at it again so that you'll be able to make a star and uh, you can keep on making them throughout worship if you want to. And I hope that they remind you of the ways that God is shining brightly in the life of Jesus and also in our lives. Let's pray together before we move on with the rest of worship. Dear God, we give you thanks for your son, Jesus, and the way that you shine brightly in his life and that also you shine brightly in our lives. Help us to follow you. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks for joining me this morning, children. I hope you'll stick with us through all of worship. I think you're going to have a great time. Those of you who are biblical scholars will know that Luke's account that includes Anna and Simon in talking about the baby Jesus does not include the star of Bethlehem. So when we talk about stars and Anna and Simeon on the same day, we're definitely mixing our Christmas stories. Now sometimes we do that, but we run the risk when we do so of not hearing the story the way that each gospel writer meant it. We run the risk 
of not being able to hear the important message that Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John had for us in the story that they told of the nativity, of the coming of God with us, of the birth of the baby Jesus. So this morning, as we meditate on stars, as we create stars as spiritual practice, as we think about Jesus as a rock star, I want to engage in a guided meditation with you around the words about Jesus from each of the gospel writers. So as we engage in this meditation together, I invite you, if you would like to, to have a piece of paper near you with a pen or pencil or marker or crayon. And I invite you to use the star as a guide in your doodling or in your note-taking or however you decide to do this, if that's helpful to you. And if it's not helpful to you, if writing and drawing is not the way that you meditate, that's okay. You might want to try it or you might not want to. But we'll move through a sequence of words, one set from each gospel writer. And if you're using the star at each point in your star, you might take a moment and write or draw what comes to mind as you hear the words from each gospel writer. We'll begin with Matthew. From Matthew chapter 1, verse 23. They shall name him Emmanuel, God with us. Take a moment now and sit with those words, God with us. What comes to mind? If you have a pencil or pen or marker, write it or draw it. If not, just allow those words to sit with you, to hold you, so that you know that God is with us. Next, hear the words from the Gospel writer, Mark. These are words that were spoken by John the Baptist in Mark chapter 1, verse 7. The one who is more powerful than I is coming after me to baptize you in the Holy Spirit. Again, if you're using the star as your guide to this meditation, move to the next point. And think about what comes to mind as you think about Jesus baptizing in the Holy Spirit. Feel free to write it or draw it. Or just let yourself be held by the knowledge that Jesus has baptized you with the Holy Spirit. Next, we hear words from the Gospel of Luke. In chapter 2, Luke talks about Simeon saying about Jesus, that he is a light for the revelation to the Gentiles and the glory to God's people in Israel. Let those words sit with you, that Jesus is both a light for the people who are not like Jesus, as well as the glory of the people who are, that Jesus has come for all. If you're using the star as your meditation, move to the next point. Write or draw ideas or images that come to you as you think about that idea that Jesus has come for Jew and Gentile, for all people. If you're not using the star, just rest with those words that Jesus is here for you and for all.
Our fourth set of words are from the Gospel of John, chapter 1, verse 2. He was in the beginning with God, and all things came into being through him, and nothing came into being without him, and what came into being was life. Again, sit with those words. What came into being into this world through Jesus in the beginning was life. Know that your life is connected with Jesus' life. And again, if you're using the star as your meditative tool, move to the fourth point and draw or write any ideas or images that come to mind as you sit with that concept that through Jesus, life has come into this world from the beginning. If you're not using the star, know that your life is being held by God and that Jesus is bringing life for you. As we bring our meditation to a close this morning, I invite you to the fifth point in your star, if you're using the star, or if you're not, to your own meditation, your own claims on who Jesus is in your life. Which of the words from the gospel writer speaks to you? Which is a challenge to you? And are there words that you would use to claim who Jesus is in your life that you haven't heard yet this morning, but that are important to you? Draw or write those words or images at the fifth point in the star, or sit with the knowledge that Jesus has come one more time into our world. And this Christmas, Jesus has come for all. Let's pray together. Holy One, we give you thanks for the many ways that we have learned about Jesus in our lives. For the words of the gospel writers, the words of the Sunday school teachers and the parents and the grandparents and the mentors that we have heard in our lifetimes that have helped us to learn who Jesus is for us. Help us in these moments, in this week, as we have more time to sit with this newborn Savior. Help us to recognize the ways that you have sent him into our lives for this time. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. to do a walking prayer around this star. You may notice that there are words at each point, and at each point I will stop, I will say the word, I'll have a moment of silence so that you can lift up your prayers, and then I'm going to say a prayer, and then I'll walk to the next point and invite you to pray for the next item as well. And so today we're going to be praying for gratitude, celebration, healing, lament, and forgiveness. So I'm going to put this down 
and we're going to begin. Let us pray. Loving God, today we pray for gratitude. Thank you, loving God, for always being with us. Thank you for our parents and our siblings and our friends. Thank you for showing the Christmas star in the sky and all of the ways that we are reminded about your love. Celebration. Thank you for the birth of Jesus and the ways that we have celebrated his birthday. Thank you for the new ways that we can be with our family and our friends this season. Healing. Loving God, we ask a prayer of healing for all who are sick today. We ask for healing for those whose hearts are broken or who might feel disappointed and discouraged. Lament. We wish that we could have been with our family and friends at Christmas just like it was before. We wish that we could go outside without thinking about wearing a mask just like it was before. We wish that we could hang out with our friends and go to school and go to work just like it was before. This pandemic is really hard and we are grieving. Our earth is also hurting because we have not taken very good care of our resources. Heal our hearts, heal our earth. Remind us that you are with us especially in our pain and when we grieve. Forgiveness. Forgive us, God. Forgive us when we hurt one another or hurt the earth. Forgive us when we say mean things. Help us to forgive our neighbors and help us to forgive, forgive ourselves as well. Loving God, we thank you for sending your star and your son. Help us to celebrate Jesus' birth all the way through the Christmas season and help us to find joy. We ask all of this as we pray the prayer Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And now it's time for our offering moment. Thank you for the many ways that you share your many gifts with our church and with our community. Your financial gifts are important, and your financial giving supports this church in so many ways, including our ministry in the community. So thank you so very much. If this is a week that you would like to give to our church, I would like to remind you that there are two ways that you can send your offering. You can send a check to our secure mailbox, Renton United Methodist Church, P.O. Box 629, Renton, Washington, 98057. You can also give online at our webpage, rentonumc.org. Thank you for your financial gifts, and thank you for sharing your other gifts with our church and our community. The angels sang when the baby was born. The angels sang when the baby was born. Angels sing when the baby was born, and they say that his name is Jesus. It come from the glory. He come from the glorious kingdom. He come from the glory. He come from the glorious kingdom. Oh yes, believer. The 
shepherds came where the baby was born. The shepherds came where the baby was born. The shepherds came where the baby was born. And they say that his name is Jesus. He came from the glory. He came from the glorious kingdom. He came from the As we prepare to go forth from this place, let's remember to keep the stars that we've made today. They will lead us right into next week when we'll meet more people who are following a star to get to Jesus. But this week, may the Spirit of God who shines bright as a star in you and who also shines through Jesus remind you that you are loved and held and valued as a child of God. Amen. Thank mm -hmm. you.